Good afternoon. My name is Maria Mugali, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our liturgy. We extend a warm welcome to anyone who might be visiting with us, or to those who are new to our parish. In the spirit of Christian fellowship, please turn to those near you, maybe to someone that you do not know, or someone alone, and extend a warm welcome. Today is the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's scripture readings invite us to become great in the sight of God by doing God's will as Jesus did surrendering our lives to him in the service, service of others. Today, we also celebrate Catechism Sunday. We extend a very special welcome to all the catechists with us today. The celebrant for our liturgy is Father Valentine, who will be assisted by Deacon John. And the Mass is being offered for Michael Dubritz, Monsignor John Martin, Mary Beth Ledling, Sister Eleanor, Mary and Raphael Ravello, Claudia Stewart, who is living.
guided by keeping your precept, we may merit to attain eternal life. To Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and hear the word of God. I bring you from the book of wisdom. The wicked say, let us reset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sits himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revolvement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of you. The word of the Lord. Yes, yes.
but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, they began to ask him, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst. Putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 
And this, in fact, this afternoon I saw these four ladies, they came from, they are coming from the Glen Road. So I saw them, I said, well, you were here last night. Yeah, yeah. They said, we came to see you because you're the most good-looking priest. <laughs> star. They're here at the star. Let's get joking, all right? So, first of all, this is what about in today's gospel we heard. The disciples wanted to be somebody, wanted to be somebody. They were somebody. They're discussing, talking about it. They don't understand the logistic between Jesus' life and their life. They think about the point of the material world. That's what about it. That Tuesday, my dad's cousin, we used to call him an uncle, uh, Raphael, he lost his wife. Her name was Mary Rebella, like my mother. And uh, she was 77 years old, the whole family had diabetic, and uh, she was such a gentle, humble, pure soul. And she married to this, my dad's cousin, uncle. He was a very terrible guy, horrible guy. The man was so angry. I don't know what was his problem. Was growing up, we lived all around. So we go, my dad will send you take a haircut, you come the haircut of the barber, you come, hey, come here, and you come, twist our head, you didn't cut your head, and boom, he will hit again. I don't know what was along with this man. And he treated the same way his wife. And she was a sickly woman. She troubled his children. He troubled his children. Troubled his children. And he just three months back, he beat his wife. He used to beat her all the time. But nobody could say anything. Because he was a, such an angry, strong man. He couldn't interfere. He couldn't say anything. He couldn't call the cops. But that's a man she was. And uh, he died yesterday. Everybody why? And that his son had put somebody to take care of him. A nice young man was taking care of him. And that morning, he hit this man, young man. I said, what kind of person? He was all very ambitious. He wanted to be with this man in the village. He wanted to be powerful. He wanted to show his power. But look at what happened. He died within three hours of buried him. But that's the way back in the year. But this is what Jesus talks about. It. What you're looking at, the powers, muscle, the wealth, that's what Jesus talks about. It. Jesus talks about it in service, serving one another, serving one another. And that's the reason the second reading comes is very strong and telling us. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace and those who cultivate peace. My, my uncle, he did not cultivate peace. Always made for anger. Nobody want, nobody liked him in the village. Because he was very divisive and very hating person. That's a person he was. So Jesus says, be a peaceful person. Be a kind person. Serving one another. And he gives an example. There is a little child saying, be like the child. Be like the child. He's so innocent, so humble, loving, caring, smiling. There is no maliciousness in the child. And that's the attitude we all need to adopt. But so based on that, I have found some reflection. I said I will share with this you before we leave the church. So what stands in the way of our pursuit of discipleship, the following of Jesus Christ? What of us are like success? Almost daily, provide a variety of media. Our attention is often drawn to those who are the wealthiest, the most powerful, the most beautiful, the most fashionable, even to the athletes and teams with the most wings. Their activities garner the headlines. Their focus appear in the social media. And the lives can often dominate our conversations. At times we may desire what they appear to have, fame and fortune. We can begin to use these ideas of success as a standard for our own vision of what makes our lives successful. Jesus' followers fail into similar traps. In the gospel, the Son of God was predicting his own passion and resurrection. Yet they were arguing about who was the greatest among them. How have our lives been shaped by the words of Jesus? What were the evils or wicked forces are working against our pursuit of discipleship? Who and what gets ignored while we are in pursuit of greatness? 
Today's reading offers some clear guidelines. Disciples of Jesus are not to seek power and prestige, which the culture offers, but peace and purity. Disciples of Jesus are not motivated by jealousy and selfish ambition, but serving the greater good. Disciples of Jesus do not give their attention to their wealthy and powerful, but the marginalized. Disciples of Jesus do not worry about their own homes, clothing, and fine dining so much, but more about providing shelter, clothing, and food for those less fortunate. Jesus was focused on Father's will and sharing the Father's love. To do this, he will endure his own passion and death and rise again in glory. To be a follower of Jesus will require a shift in our priorities every hour of every day, often with our own dying and rising. Perhaps Today's gospel acclamation says it best. He has called us. He has called us to the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that is worth pursuing. Maybe we take these words into our hearts today and try to work on it. Try to work on it each and every step. And you will find the meaning of these weekends. The readings. Amen. As a beautiful people of God, we stand and profess our faith and we will sign the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived in the light of his spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died in his body. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, and the resurrection of the body. Amen. My beloved family, guided by Christ's words, we come to you, Father, and ask that you hear our prayer. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. In today's gospel, Jesus gives us a very clear message on how we should treat our families and our fellow men and women when he tells us if anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last and servant of all. We pray for the wisdom to accept this guidance and for the humility and the generosity to introduce him into our daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those called to be shepherds in our church and for those who have dedicated their lives to spreading the good news of the gospel. Our Pope Francis, bishops, priests, religious, deacons, and lay ministers, that they be guided and protected in their mission by the grace of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in our parish and ask our Father in heaven that he inspire us to create a community which is generous, kind and welcoming to all and is particularly caring of the sick and those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord for wisdom for world leaders, a wisdom that is pure, makes for peace, is kindly and considerate, full of compassion and intent on doing good. We pray to the Lord. Lord for married couples during this year of reflection on Pope Francis's Ecclesial, the joy of love, that they will value, that they are for one another and for their children, witnesses of the salvation which they share through the sacrament of marriage. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all catechists, that they may effectively lead those in 
trusted to them a deeper knowledge and love of God, we pray to the Lord. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, especially Elena Rivera, Leonard Talba, Anna Nar Narduli, Adelaide Nifsan, Donna Goldman, Geraldine Frema, and for those who have died recently, including Monsignor John Lawton, Sister Eleanor Cordera, Mary and Raphael Rivello, Mary Beth Leveley, and for those who mourn, we pray to the Lord. For the special intentions of all gathered here and the unspoken prayers in our hearts, which we pause for. And this Mass being offered for Michael Dupritz, Monsignor John Martin, Mary Beth Lovely, Sister Eleanor, Mary and Raphael Ravello, Claudia Stewart, who is living. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Gracious God, source of all wisdom and knowledge, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us and to proclaim a message of faith, hope, and love to all people. In your goodness, bless these sisters and brothers of ours who have generously offered themselves in ministries of teaching and faith sharing for our parish. Strengthen them with your Spirit's power and magnify the gifts that are already theirs, that they may teach by word and example the truth which comes from you. We ask this in the name of our brother and teacher, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give the round of applause for these two our categories.
my loving family free, pray that my sacrifice of yours be victory to the value of my new father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your holy people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may they may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us realize and just our good year, our salvation always and everywhere. We give thanks to our Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you so love the world, that in your mercy you send us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin. So that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, by sinning we are lost in disobedience. And to Lord, with all the angels of the saints, which you give your thanks as an exaltation, we all acclaim.
welcome them into the light of your feelings. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Mother of the Church, Saint Joseph, a most cherished spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, including Saint Pius the of Peter II, Saint Agnes, Father Pio, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, Saint Francis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We merit to be coherent eternal life and may praise and glorify you, in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we live in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever. Saint Pius X enriched the living facility for the retired priest. 
And next to this collection will be for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Thank you for your support, generosity. This weekend we mark Catechetical Sunday, a day on which we give special recognition to all our dedicated catechists. There will be a special blessing for the catechists at each man's. Grief has no boundaries, excellent bereavement programs are being offered at St. Paul's Attack, and here are parishes for those suffering the loss of our loved ones, so please check the bulletin. Our family gala on Sunday, October 17, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Chris Hollow Country Club. We like to invite young families and their children too, so please look at the parish website. Please try to enroll as soon as possible because there's a lot of work to be done, so we will as soon as possible, don't wait for the last minute. Anniversary Mass on October 24th. I'm very pleased to Mark announce that Bishop Murphy will be our presider for the celebration to mark not only our now 66th parish anniversary, but more importantly, our coming back as a story a parish life post COVID. I hope you all will join. It will be on October 24th at 12 p.m. Mass, and we have a lot of hospitality and a lot of entertainment. The Columbia's are sponsoring their popular trash bag clothing drive the weekend of September 24th and 25th as next weekend. Donations will be accepted before and after all masses. Youth Mass on Saturday, <coughs> next Saturday, September 25th at 5.15 p.m. And the Rosary Night will be on Monday, September 27th at 7.30 p.m. I hope you will join us. J.S. Fellow, Commissioner Father, is an agile day pursuing his passion as an advocate to raise awareness about Alzheimer's. Jay's goal for this year is to run 100 miles from Mount Tucker Lighthouse to Alzheimer's Center in West Valley. We encourage you to support Jay's mission. Let's talk to you that the house and practice your polka for the annual St. Pilate October Fest on Saturday, October 9, hosted by our nines. And blessing of the animals will take place on October 3rd, Sunday, October 3rd at 2 p.m. near the ground. The monthly food drive on Nights of Colour is scheduled for the next weekend. And uh, this weekend, our brother Nights are selling the annual C and B tickets. Please support our Nights. May I also ask for your consideration of the Captain of Appeal. First and many thanks to all of you who have brought us so close to reaching our goal. As you, see, as you can see from the thermometer, we are almost there. If we have not yet made a contribution or able to do so, please consider lending your support. Our budget is based on reaching goal as we have always done in years past. And even if to receive a substantial rebate in action of our assisting those in need, in the Catholic Sapir is our largest parish fundraiser. Thank you for your help. And the football season has begun. Some have time jokes. Why did the football coach go to the bank to get his corner back? <laughs> Which two football teams play in the Pirate Super Bowl? The Seahawks and the Buccaneers. <laughs> Looks like they're not good jokes. <laughs> Why did the poor quarterback have his receiver cross at midfield? He was trying to make ends meet. I was losing money in a pay phone like a football game. If you don't get the quarterback, you get the receiver. <laughs> Alright, next time I'll get a better show. <laughs> That's all we have. Please stand for a quick prayer and bless you. Grace is to raise up the Lord, those who renew with the sacrament, that it may come to causes your redemption, both in mystery and the manner of our life. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. May the blessings of good and compassion God be upon us and our families and our parish, a troubled world, difficult world, our wounded church, the Father, the Son, and the